Yeah, so thanks for joining me and welcome. We'll more than likely have some more guests joining us very shortly. So this webinar, Growing Your Business Using Social Media, is brought to you through the Australian Federal Government's Australian Small Business Advisory Services Program and is presented by Business Station, Treaty Business Consulting and Regional Development Australia. You will notice that your microphones have been muted for better sound quality of the recording, but it is an interactive webinar. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please don't hesitate to pop them into the chat box for me. And obviously everybody who is registered today will receive a copy of the recording and hopefully there'll be some valuable content in there. We've got a lot to get through. So for those of you who don't know me, though, I know Jackie's here today and she knows who I am. My name is Kerry Savrin. I'm the co-founder of Altitude Business Solutions and the current president of the Beanley Yetla Chamber of Commerce. So there's a little bit about me. You're in the right place today if you're ready to gain a clear understanding of social media and how to use it to grow your business and move your business forward. Now, there are billions, yes, billions of people using and visiting social media websites on a daily basis daily basis. So Facebook currently has over 2 billion daily active users. So that's not just people who are on the platform, but that's people who are actually active on the platform. YouTube is around that same, uh, around the 2 billion mark as well. Instagram's, Instagram's just over 1 billion and, and uh, Twitter has approximately 330 million people who use it a day. LinkedIn's another popular one for us business owners with 303 million people active users a day. And then there's Pinterest at 250 million users per day. So why do I like to share these current statistics? Well, your customers are on social media, but are you on social media? And that's the reason why a lot of people, particularly business owners, when they first go into business, they just don't realize how much of an impact social media has had on the live of the everyday lives of people and that it's just it's become part of their routine that they do you know some people will say that they they uh you know get up and the first thing that they do is check their social media or they're checking their social media from their bedside so uh it's extremely popular and it's where you need to be so with these staggering numbers it's a really powerful way to be able to get your business in front of people who are currently sitting in their lounge room or are at home We've never had that opportunity before social media and digital marketing came along. So in the old days, what we do is we, in the old days, listen to me, uh, we'd, you know, decide we're going to do a newspaper ad. We'd normally spend about four to five hundred dollars on that newspaper ad, maybe more. Um, we knew that the newspaper was going out to 10,000 people, but we certainly didn't know how many of those 10,000 people saw our ad. Um, and we just repeat the process. Um, and, you know, there would be many business owners who wouldn't use a call to action. And so they'd never actually know if they were getting results from their marketing. The great thing about digital marketing is that you can actually see results. And probably one of the most phenomenal things when it comes to not only social media, but the way that that um, technology has moved forward, particularly over the last 15 years. You know, when I look back to even just 2007, it doesn't seem that long ago to me, uh, when we started our cafe, or purchased our cafe, um, you know, we were one of the first um, cafes to actually have a Facebook page uh, in the Hyperdome where we were. So, uh, you know, big major shopping centre. So it's really amazing to think how far it's come. And, the great thing about it with social media in particular, but also digital marketing, it allows you to attract new customers and connect with your audiences all over the world. So people that you wouldn't normally talk to. So if you are not a bricks and mortar business, if you are an online business like we are, um, it, particularly during COVID, we were dealing with a lot of clients. We had clients in Glasgow. We had another client um, over in Canada. So we were dealing with people that we would never have had the opportunity to deal with before. So it gives you a great opportunity to have that broader reach. Now, whether you're talking about just a, a, you know in Australia or whether you're talking about the whole entire world you're able to access people like you've never been able to access them before and it's just about having the you know the right I guess process behind doing it so you can establish establish yourself as a professional in your industry and you know as a bit of a thought leader by posting regular content and showing yourself as an expert in your field 
So all of this information raises some important questions when it comes to social media. So the first one that people always say is, what is the best platform to use? Um, you know, what tactics, what tactics should you use to be seen by the most amount of people? Are there certain types of content that perform better than others? Um, can, how regularly do you need to post content? And what etiquette rules do you need to follow, I guess, on the social media platforms? Um, and if you've, uh, one of these questions you've come with today, then we're going to make sure that we answer these questions for you. The first thing I want to talk to you about today is strategy. Now, many business owners think that if they simply start posting on social media, they'll be successful and they'll attract new customers, but it really doesn't work that way. In order to build your business through social media, you need to have a strategy in place. And that strategy needs to be across all of your marketing. So social media is one piece of the pie. Yes, it is. Is it a major piece? Yes, it probably is a lot bigger than what it used to be, but it's still a piece of the pie, you know, and it needs to fit in with all of your other marketing that you are doing. You know, if you, I'm going to go back to the old letterboxes and say, if you're doing a, a DL letterbox drop in the area, you want your social media to be in line with what that DL letterbox drop is saying as well. So it needs to be across the board. So you need to know where you're going to post, what you're going to post, how often you're going to post. And it not only is it important to have a plan and a bit of a strategy for how you're going to engage with your audience and the journey that you're going to take them on, but it just takes the pressure off. You sit down, you do this strategy, you do a plan for the next month, you get it all sorted, bang, you're done. Um, it, and it really can be that simple. The only thing that you can't schedule in advance with social media is interacting with your potential customers or clients. Everything else can, can actually be scheduled and done. You know, it's not enough to simply just post something and walk away. You have to have that inter interaction. So you need to have a bit of a plan. So having a plan, you know, in, today what we're going to do is going to go through, I guess, a bit of a plan for you. You'll discover that we'll go through sort of an effective step-by-step -step social media strategy for building a business. Um, we'll guide you through, you know, what platform you should be on, why you should be on there, etc. So we'll start there. So step number one, choosing your platforms. Now, many business owners just think I need to be across all of them. And that's simply just not true. Um, if you are not, uh, there are some platforms which are better for some businesses than others. And I'll give you an example. So my business, uh, we deal with small business owners, helping them with their social media and their online presence. So I am a business to business um, business. So the best, one of the best places for me to be is on LinkedIn. Um, but the LinkedIn strategy that you use is very different to what you would use on Facebook. And this is why it's important that you make the choice as to what is the best platform for you. So you're not trying to post on every social media platform out there. You're trying to focus on the ones that will be, that have the most impact on your business because you want to be posting less, um, but getting better results. So in order to do this, you really need to make sure that you know who your audience is. So where do they spend most of their time when it comes to social media? We'll get to that in a little minute. But where do they like to interact with brands and businesses? You know, what sites influence them to purchase? Who are their biggest, you know, influences in their space? What are they doing in their everyday lives? So you really need to sit down and know who your avatar is. Everybody has an ideal client. And every single one of those clients normally fits within a specific niche that um, is around a particular platform. For example, if your audience is a younger audience, then your focus may be to be on Instagram and YouTube because that's where the younger audiences tend to hang out. Um, Instagram and YouTube has a really strong following amongst millennials. So if your focus um, on those platforms, you'll have better, better results. But if your focus is on business professionals, as I said earlier, LinkedIn could possibly be where you need to be. Um, it's a good place to focus. So making sure that you have a strategy over the different types of um, different types of platforms is really important because you want to make sure that uh, you know what you're posting on a regular basis. So I have a slide that's actually, as I go to go to the next slide, I've realized I've accidentally deleted the next slides out and I don't know why I did that. 
um, but I'll make sure I attach it to the recording of the video as well. Um, but I'll just quickly go over the different social media platforms. So I'm going to start with I'm going to start with sort of I guess the main ones. So start with LinkedIn. LinkedIn is for business professionals. So this is where if you're a business to business kind of business that you would be, um, or if you're in that professional space, um, in that corporate space, then and that's your ideal client, then that's where you need to be. Instagram is for as I said earlier, you know millennials, that younger crowd. Um, we are starting to, to see an older crowd starting to creep into Instagram, but it's not um, on a regular basis just yet. Facebook is a really good all-rounder. It's really good because that tends to be where people start. So uh, an example would be my parents. You know, I'm trying to get them onto Facebook at the moment. That's going to be the first platform that they're probably going to be on. So it tends to be the first place that people go to. And, and it's one of the most well-known um, social media platforms. So there's a little bit of trust around the brand as well. Um, the only negative thing I'll say about Facebook, it, it is the biggest social media platform in the world. So you have a lot of competition on there. You need to make sure that you have a plan for getting through that noise as well. Uh, Pinterest, Pinterest is being used more and more when Pinterest first started. It was all about, um, you know, crafty things, finding crafty things to do or crafty things to make or Jackie, I know you're in the cake industry. So, you know, finding um, things on, you know, how to make cake decorations, etc. Um, but it's moving more and more into the professional space now. And in fact, Pinterest out of all the social media platforms is being used more often than not as a search engine. So what that means is someone is actually on there searching um, for a particular product, just like they would in Google. So they're using Google and they're using Pinterest to be able to um, do that also. Um, probably one of the newer ones that I will touch on is TikTok. Um, TikTok is great if you love to get in front of the camera or if you have a really great product, um, Jackie, there's a fantastic cake maker um, on TikTok. So I will have to share the information with you if you're on TikTok. Um, but she just um, does videos, not a lot of herself, but a lot of the cakes that she's actually making, what she's doing for her clients. And that's how she uses that particular platform. Very young demographic. Um, you may have seen short dances, et cetera, on there as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very much sort of the, the younger demographic again to Instagram. So it really depends. And I know um, with a business particular like cake making, your ideal client can be across many different age groups. Um, so it may be, I would probably leave Pinterest for now. And, and I would say um, for your business, Jackie, you should focus on Facebook and, and Instagram would be the two that I would be going for for you and coming up with a strategy for that also. Now, if you don't know where your audience spends most of your time, like if you have current clients, um, the best way to find out where they're spending their time on social media is to simply ask them, send them an email, send them a text message. Text messages work really well. Um, you know, would you mind just answering a quick question for me? Um, are you on any social media platforms? And if so, which one? And a lot of people will, you know, could you help me out with marketing? I'm doing a marketing plan. Could you help me out by just answering a quick question, applying to this email with the social media platform that you prefer? And it's amazing how many people want to help you out and they do actually reply to a message like that. We just did one of those with one of our clients yesterday. It was very successful. So uh, another great way um, to actually determine if you already have a Facebook page or a LinkedIn page or you're already on social media, you know, have a look at the content that you've already posted. Um, see what's got the biggest response and sort of judge it from there also. So um, it's not always easy to figure out, but with a strategy in place, it makes it easier. Now, the other thing to consider with you, when choosing a social media platform is what you're selling. Um, depending on the products or services you sell, as I said, one platform might be better than the other. What I will say with Instagram is that it's very visual. So for a business like cake making, you know, they like to see those big, beautiful cakes that you're making you're sending out to somebody so that is a very visual platform um, and Facebook can be visual also don't get me wrong but they you know love to see a little bit more of the wording and the technical side for it as well 
Now, as you consider which platforms to use, it's essential, as I said, that you think smaller rather than bigger. You know, you don't want to spread yourself too thin and everyone will be telling you, are you on this platform? Are you on that platform? I'm really going to ask you to focus today and just focus in on two. So as I said to you earlier, if you're not sure, Facebook is a really good one to fall back on um, because with over 2 billion users, um, you'll get a response out there from some people um, and the majority of people are on it as well. So at the end of the day, what matters most is not the particular platform that you choose, but rather what you choose and stick to. You know, you have to be able to be on a platform and give it a really good red hot go for six to 12 months before you can actually see whether that's actually working or not. And I know that's really painful. Step number two, if you already have a social media profile or pages um, on, on either Instagram, Facebook, wherever you are, I'm gonna to talk to you now about optimizing your profile. This is a really important step. So if you went to a business's social media page and saw that they barely had information, any information about their business, would you actually want to connect with them or do business with them? The answer is normally no. Um, it's normally not. Um, and I see so many business owners, particularly ones that have been on social media for a little while and they come to us and they say, look, we've been doing this for three years and it's not working. And the first thing I see is that they don't have their trading hours in and there's no phone number there. <laughs> um, so how do I actually know that they're a reputable business? And I will, what I will touch on here as well is just to remind you that it takes 12 to 18 touch points via digital before someone will actually do business with you. So if you think about that from a social media perspective, um, about 25% of your posts are getting seen by someone who likes and follows your pages. So you would essentially have to post, you know, somewhere between 100 and 150 posts um, to convince that person to do business with you. Um, but most business owners aren't consistent enough to keep up with that. If there's no consistency, then you're going to lose it as well. So optimizing your profile, I'm gonna to talk to you about making sure that you select a professional username. If you do have a business name, make sure it is the name of the business. Um, please don't use a personal profile as like a business page. It's a really big no-no and really you don't have any analytics or anything in the back end to be able to see whether what you're posting is a success or not. So please make sure that you are using Facebook business pages because they are going to give you the most amount of analytics and use a username that is your, um, you know, the name of your business. It's not something like, you know, Tulip Girl 1997 or something, uh, you know, needs to, it's not about it being personal, it's about it being professional um, and remembering that people will see it. Now for Facebook, um, making sure, as I said, you have that professional um, page set up, not the, the profile set up, but making sure that all of your about information is filled out. So that means your phone number, your opening hours, you know, if people just see open 24 hours, they don't believe it. Um, they think this is just a page that hasn't really been set up properly and I don't even know if it's a reputable business. Making sure that you use a high quality profile photo. So if you have a logo for your business, this is where I'm going to recommend that you use the logo as your profile picture. You want that logo to be recognisable across lots of different social media platforms. Uh, if you are a brand that actually uses yourself as or your own image, as uh, the front person for the business, then I'm fine with you using yourself as the, the cover image. Just know that the, the branding and having that logo out there actually has a better reach when you do have it as the, um, as the profile picture. It's one of the first things that people see is you wanna make sure that it's nice and clear and crisp um, and it you know, hasn't been copied from a website and it's not pixelated. You, know, you wanna make sure that people can actually see it properly. Uh, if you don't have a logo for your business and you need to get a logo design, there are plenty of um, local logo designers um, around you where you are at the moment. Um, but a great uh, website that we can recommend as well is a website called Taylor Brands. Um, they offer uh, very affordable rates to be able to um, make websites, I'm sorry, make logos for you as well. And it's pretty much instantaneous, so there's no waiting. As I was talking about, write a compelling about us section. So this is the story of your business. You know, it's where you communicate what you're all about and what matters to you most. 
people want to get to know the people behind the business so don't be afraid to put information in there as well depending on what social media platform you are using you may be limited with the amount of space that you have um, but try and get to the heart of what really makes your business different from every other business you know knowing that in the case of uh, cake making you not only are you dealing with other bricks and mortar businesses as well but you're dealing with um, the competition of those at home businesses so what is your point of difference what makes you different to all of your competitors uploading a professional cover photo so almost every social media platforms allows you to upload a professional cover photo so this is just an example of one that we've used in the past we refresh ours um, uh, quite often so this may not be i don't think this is the one that we have up at the moment um, but it's telling people you know here is our business name um, attitude business solutions give you business altitude website design facebook page management graphic design and online learning so it's telling them exactly what it is that we do and um, one thing that's not in this picture that i do highly recommend and it may very well be in our current um, uh, profile um, cover images on our social media is um, putting pictures of yourself or putting up um, phone numbers as well so that people can see that phone number it's a really good advertising space when they go into your social media platform particularly on a mobile phone it's the first thing that they see so it's an opportunity for you to be able to advertise in there as well so making sure that it is a professional image and it's nice and crisp is really important making sure that you enter in all of your relevant contact information so remember you're trying to grow your business here so you want to make it as easy as possible for potential customers to do business with you um, make sure you've got a website in there if you've got a website a phone number an email address include all the information that you possibly can um, make sure that it is correct and make sure that everything all the links actually work as well now when it comes to sort of running your um, Facebook page or Instagram, whatever it is that you're looking at, I want you to be a little bit professional on this as well. Like, remember, this is not just you're, you're building something for the future. You may sell your business down the track. And when you sell a business, what normally comes along with that these days is the social media um, platforms as well. So you want to be making sure that you are posting as professionally as you can on there, keeping everything relevant, relevant. Obviously, this girl in this picture is a bit more of a businessy kind of person. But um, if you're being a cake maker, um, obviously, you just need to keep it a little bit more in, in line with your niche but making sure it is as professional as possible. So that way it adds value to your business. Step number three, creating a posting schedule. Now I'm gonna go a little bit off track with this one compared to what I have with my notes because I don't, I don't have a lot of notes in this section. I do talk a lot about it and I've got eight steps to get through. So I'm conscious of the time that we have together and I wanna make sure that I get through as much as possible. But once you've optimised your social media profile, it's, it's time to sit down and map out things like how often you are going to be posting. Um, and you can call this a posting schedule, you can call it a strategy session, you can just call it planning, whatever you want to call it. So ideally you need to sit down with a piece of paper and a pen before you even begin to, to start creating content or consider what you're going to post because there's a few things that you need to cover. So I always talk with my clients about covering five, um, what I call pillars or topics. So the pillars that we like to create with our clients are uh, promotional, inspirational. So these are the different types of posts that you will have. Educational, social proofing, and storytelling and I'll just run through each of those quickly because this is a, a completely new direction that we've taken our business and our clients in the last three months and it works very well so you sit down with your monthly plan and I'm going to say that this particular month has four weeks I know that some months have five weeks we're going to work with four and you've decided that you are going to post five times a week and straight away you go oh my god that means I have to come up with 20 posts for the month okay so the first thing you do is you look at that month and you go, okay, where are the special holidays? Most months will have things like a queen's birthday. We've got Anzac day coming up. We've got labor day coming up, you know, all of those um, things that need to be. So you've got your, you've got your calendar there and straight away, 
you know, for the month, for the next month, let's say between April and May, you've already got two posts there that are already taken up with days that are what I call special holidays. So, you know, you might put an Anzac Day post up for Anzac Day and then you might put a special holiday post up for Labor Day. So then once you've got there, um, if you've got staff that are working for you, this is where I highly recommend you think of birthdays and things like that. So are there any staff birthdays that are happening in the month? Um, and let's say that, yes, you might have one or two in there. Well, there's another couple of posts already taken up. Now, the rest of the posts are going to be created from our five content pillars. So those five content pillars, again, they're either going to be any post that you post is either going to be educational, inspiring, promotional, telling a story or social proofing. So promotional, this is where you say, this is me and this is what I do. Now, these are the posts that you can't do all the time. We've all been on those social media accounts where they keep saying, this is what this is what we are, this is what we do, buy from me, buy from me, buy from me. And you can't do that all the time. But you do need to have an element of it. So there does need to be an element of, hey guys, this is, you know, this hit, look at this cake that we just made or look at what we've just done here. If you're wanting something similar, this cake costs around $210 um, and we need a seven day lead in time to be able to create it for you. And it will feed 40 people. So you're sort of saying, this is what we do and you're promoting yourself. So that's the promotional post. So once you've sat down, you might go, okay, so I've decided Monday is going to be my so my promotional post day. Um, and we've already got a public holiday on one Monday. So I only need to come up with three promotional posts. So you'll create those three promotional posts. It's at this point, if you're not using a program like Canva, Canva makes things very easy for you. Uh, we do have another webinar on Canva if you're interested in that. Might be worth looking towards the future at. Um, so you would create those, um, those three promotional posts. Now, you can repost things. This is something that I want to make very clear as well. So if you're saying, hey, we, we make cakes, this is what we do, this is how much it is, you can use that down the track. You know, a post on Facebook as a really good example lasts around about 24 to 48 hours before people stop seeing it. So you can repost it in a month's time. It really does not matter at all. So when you're creating these promotional posts, remember that you're going to be able to repurpose them and use them down the track. So if you can come up with five or six of them, that's great on, you know, slightly different products or slightly different wording, then you'll pretty much have enough content to keep you going. So that's promotional. Inspirational. So we would have all seen inspirational as in the inspirational Mondays or motivational Mondays or something along those lines. I'm all great for that kind of thing, but I want you to relate it back to your business in some way, shape or form. So if there is a particular, I'm um, sticking to cakes, Jackie, because you're here with me. Um, if there's a particular cake maker that you look up to or, um, you know, an Australian based cake maker I don't know I'm, I'm just she's not even Australian based I'm thinking Nigella Lawson just comes to my head you might write a quote from Nigella Lawson and in the background have a picture of one of your beautiful cakes so you're trying to keep it it's inspirational but you're trying to keep it within your niche you're not just randomly going and picking something if you are randomly going and picking something love Nigella me yes I love Nigella too I'm with you so if you're randomly just picking a quote or a, a motivational um, a motivational quote or an inspirational quote, it's okay for you to use that. It just means that you have to, um, in the background of the picture, I'd be putting a cake still. So that's kind of the business that we're, we're talking about. So you can still have that same um, quote, you know, whoever it's from, Richard Branson or whoever you want, to, want it to be. Um, and then just put something that that is to do with your business as the graphic in the background. And that can make all the difference because you're keeping it on brand, you're keeping it with your branding colors and you're going through and doing that. So we've spoken about promotional, we've spoken about inspirational. I'm going to talk about social proofing. So social proofing is a term that we use when we're talking about testimonials and reviews. And I know that places like Google has reviews and Facebook pages have reviews, yes. But I'm going to ask that you pull those reviews out, you make a really nice graphic of them in a platform like Canva, and you share them out on a regular basis. What you're trying to do is someone's deciding to do business with you, they're going to go to your social media platforms, they're going to probably have a look back at the last week. 
For starters, if they get to your social media platform and the last time you've posted is 2017, they're going to leave. They're going to think you've closed down. They're not even going to bother. So that's why posting regularly is really important. But if they can see that you posted two days ago, they're probably going to have a look back at the last week's worth of posts. So we want to show them a little bit of everything. So we've shown them a little bit of promotional. This is what we do. This is how we do it. This is how much it is. We've given them a little bit of inspiration and now we're social proofing. So now we're going to put a post up, which is about, you know, the, the fact that you made a beautiful cake for a birthday party and somebody has given you a review. So that's what we talk about when we talk about social proofing. So do one of those once a week also. So then when you sit down and you go, okay, so now I need to look at my reviews and I need to get four reviews for the next month. So you can see how quickly we're building content for the whole entire month. So the next one is storytelling. You know, stories sell. They really do. People love a good story. And if you're looking at using um, Instagram as your platform, more and more often people are now reading the words that you put with your beautiful picture. So don't waste that opportunity. And being the cake business is fantastic because you have so many images that you can use. So you can say, right, um, here's a picture of a cake that we did for Sally. And, um, you know, the, the great thing was that Sally had actually ordered her cake from someone else. And two days before the event, that person had said that they couldn't do it, that there was an issue. And we were able to fill the order within 24 hours. So you're not there going, guess what? We can fill orders in 24 hours, but that's sort of what you're doing. But you're doing it in some kind of story. What you need to do is you need to make sure that you're not the hero of the story, that it's actually the customer is. So the customer is the one that's like, Sally was just so happy to be able to have that cake and to celebrate her birthday. And if you have, if you can ask your clients to take pictures of them with their cakes, obviously for weddings, we do that kind of stuff all the time. And we do for birthdays as well. So if you can ask them to share a picture with you, um, of them enjoying the cake or cutting the cake, then you would be using that as part of the advertising for the post, as long as they're obviously okay for you to share it on social media. Most people are these days, but you still have to ask the question. So promotional, inspiring, uh, social proofing, educational. Uh, educational is a really good one because this is where you have the opportunity to cement yourself um, as a bit of an expert in your field by revealing something that people may not know. And every single industry we've ever worked with our, with our clients, there are things that become every day to the person who's the expert, who the person who is not the expert does not know at all. And because I'm not in the cake industry, Jackie, I can't give you uh, an example, but what I can say for me, for example, for websites, uh, we put some information up about what a favour con is. Um, a favour con is the little tiny image that you see at the top of your Chrome, um, oh, I was going to say post, it's not a post, but your little tab at the top um, where it actually has your uh, website name. There's normally a little picture next to it. And if you don't put any favorcon on your website, you'll have a little picture of the world. Or if you're a WordPress site, WordPress will take the opportunity to advertise WordPress whenever they can and they will put their WordPress symbol in there. So when we started talking about this favorcon, people were like, oh my God, I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know you could change that. Hey, I just noticed my website doesn't have that. And it created a lot of conversation, but it also cemented us as a bit of an expert and knowing what we were talking about. So the educational post is really important. So now you've got your pillars. Um, you've got your five pillars that you can work to. And that just means you can sit down and go, right, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to do my four promotional posts, my four inspirational posts, my four educational posts, my four storytelling posts, and my four um, social proofing posts, which are your reviews. And look at that you've got a month's worth of content, you are ready to go. That is literally how easy it can be, but it's a strategy. You're showing people different stuff about your business. So that is not actually, it's a little bit of added content that I've added into this section today because we have changed in the last few months. So it's really important to, um, you know, keep you guys updated with some really good skills. And that's a really good one that we've found we use with our clients and we wanted to share with you today. 
So the other thing that you need to think of once you've got, you know, now I know what I'm going to post, how am I going to post it? So is it going to be a video? Is it going to be an image? You know, what's that going to, to be when you post it? Um, for those of you that love to be behind the, the camera but don't like to be in front of it, it's okay. Um, it's particularly with you, Jackie, being cakes, you're going to have beautiful cakes that you're going to be able to show and do videos of also. But I will say that videos um, do get the most amount of reach um, on all social media platforms. Um, and when you're on platforms like TikTok and Instagram at the moment, um, they're really big on reels, you know, little 60 second videos. So uh, yeah, it's, it's really important to do some video in there as well. Um, I'm not gonna go into that because I think I've covered that section very well. Step number four. So we're halfway, halfway through, just over halfway in our webinar and we're halfway through. So we're getting there. So begin posting on social media. So once you've created your social media content calendar, so you've done the calendar, it's time to actually begin posting on social media. And this is, this is where I say, you know, the, the rubber meets the road. It's time to actually start um, giving value to your clients on social media. Um, if you want to win um, clients and satisfy your existing one, it's important to post consistently and post things that are going to add value to your clients as well. So that's why we always have that kind of platform of putting in some educational things as well. So your post should help your audience to think about something in a new way or take action like they never have before, laugh or smile um, and learn something valuable. So, you know, when I think about cake disasters, Jackie, you could have some real fun with the, uh, the whole nailed it concept. Um, and, uh, you know, you'd have a little bit of fun with your uh, clients on there as well. Um, the different types of posts, as we said, we've already gone through the five that we like to go through, but here's some more um, ideas for you as well. So you could do live videos if that's what you like to do, tutorial videos, um, tips and tactics or tricks as well, um, and pictures that will motivate your audience to actually take, take action um, is really key. So those inspirational quotes can be good for things like that. Um, now, this is an example here that I normally go through about a health and wellness coach, but I think I've given some really good examples tonight around the cake industry, so I'm just going to leave it with there for now. Step number five is about engaging with your followers. Now, it's not just enough to simply post stuff on social media and go, that's it, I'm done. You have to engage with your followers. The real power of social media is that it creates conversations between you and your followers. When you think about the old advertising in the newspaper, there was no way of you being able to interact with your potential client or customer. Social media and digital marketing gives us the ability to be able to have that two-way conversation. People can contact us, we can contact them, vice versa. So conversations are the key to getting more clients. You know, it's important to regularly and consistently engage with your followers. And, you know, in other words, you need to be responding to all of those comments. If somebody comes in and they like one of your posts, you need to invite them to like the page. When they like the page, you can send them a message to say, hey, thanks for liking my page and supporting us more business. I really appreciate it. Just to let you know, we make birthday cakes, specialty cakes, et cetera, et cetera. So you're telling them, you're saying thanks, but you're also telling them a little bit more about what it is that you do. Now, there is a guy, an Australian guy, and his name is just completely gone with me at the moment, but he talks about how he was able to build his business within six months um, on LinkedIn and how he did that through conversations. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're on LinkedIn, whether you're on Facebook or whether you're on Instagram, you can do exactly the same things. You just have to be willing to have those interactions with people. So even though this is why it's important to create your content and schedule in advance, because throughout the month, you just want to be replying to, um, you know, anyone that's commenting and thanking anybody that's liking the page. You don't want to have to be going, what am I going to post tomorrow, which is the, what the majority of um, business owners do. So as I said, social media is not a one-way street. It, rather, it's a conversation between you and those who follows you. So the conversation can go both ways. One of the most important things on social media is to really be authentic don't try and be somebody that you're not. I know perfectionism is out there and I'm probably a really bad one for it. I don't do a lot of videos because the whole perfectionism thing gets on top of me. But 
if you really just people want to see authentically you they just want to see who you are who your business is not showing up perfect every day but just really being authentic and that will get you a lot more followers and engagement as well now another reason to engage with your followers is that social media platforms tend to prioritize the post with the most engagement so if somebody likes a post or comments on a post and you post back, well, that's more engagement. So what Facebook does, it goes, oh, there's a bit of conversation happening on this post. We're going to show it to a few more people. So this is when we start talking about organic growth or organic engagement. That's exactly what we're talking about. We haven't just said boost this post, show it to, you know, 1600 people we're actually getting comments and likes and everything on it. So the post is naturally being boosted, which is great. So um, engaging with your followers on a regular basis is a really good way to be able to increase your organic, your organic reach and engagement. So you must talk with your followers. You must create conversations, answer any questions that come through, um, whether that be by the chat feature or whether that be on an actual post and respond to any problems that are actually raised as well. Um, because quite often somebody else is looking at that going, oh, that's a really good question. I wonder how they're going to respond to that. Um, how often I see people post things on social media and then a question gets asked and they don't actually reply or comment. And I think, gee, what a real missed opportunity. You could have missed out on, on an actual customer there. So how can you create conversations with followers? Well, you can do things like ask questions as well. So I know on, um, on LinkedIn, there is a poll feature as well. So don't be afraid to use that as one of your posts. You can do a bit of a poll um, or ask a question. You know, we did one a few weeks ago, which was just about whether somebody, whether you liked, um, whether the tomato sauce went in the cupboard or the fridge, you know, <laughs> and it was so funny, the amount of people that actually were just, you know, backwards and forwards. Um, surprisingly, so the winner was cupboard, not fridge, which has never happened to me before. And I've run that question a few times. So I'm um, doing live videos in which you talk to your audience. So very similar to what we're doing today. If you do do a live video on Facebook, be authentic. You know, it says they're focused on being real and authentic. Absolutely. If you see someone pop on, don't be afraid to say, you know, hi, Jackie, thanks for joining me or being the only one to join me today. Um, ask others to comment on a particular topic. So you use to sort of conduct polls, you get all of those things that you can do to try and get interaction with them. So step number six is follow the right people. So what a lot of mistakes that um, people make is when they decide to do, um, you know, have their own business, they don't follow people who are experts in their niche or their field. They think, oh no, I don't want to follow them. But I think you need to know that, you know, what's the, what's the current trend with those people? Because other people will be watching them, you know, spoke about Nigella earlier. There will be uh, people in the Logan area who also follow Nigella and will enjoy a reference to her as well. So making sure you're following the right people. It's not just about getting people to follow you. It's also about you following the right people and having conversations with them. So um, consider following influencers, as I said, in your industry um, and making sure that you're commenting and interacting with those people as well. On social media, you may like to consider being part of groups. And this is a strategy that we do uh, actually use quite often with our clients. So we will join their business page up to groups on Facebook and we will post and advertise as that business. So as you can appreciate, I'm just going to give an example. I live in the Beanley area and let's say there was the, um, the Beanley community page. And I watch the Beanley community page as a Beanley citizen. And I see constantly up there that the Beanley at the Chamber of Commerce is constantly posting on there. Um, so I get to see Beanley at the Chamber of Commerce all the time. Um, you know, one of the businesses in the local area who's really big on social media is the Chemist Warehouse. They're constantly on there posting on other people's posts. And you just see Chemist Warehouse, Chemist Warehouse all the time as you're going through. And this is what we call subliminal branding. So uh, Chemist Warehouse has actually become my chemist before I even knew that I needed one. And that's what you need to do with your business. So you're trying to become their um, cake maker or their go-to cake maker. 
before they know that they need to have one. And then all of a sudden when they go, oh, actually, I wouldn't mind a cake for that birthday. I'm going to use that lady that's constantly on social media and, you know, typing in stuff for, I see her on the community groups because people want to support local. They want to support their community. So they tend to, that can work really, really well. So you can have some really engaging conversations. I'll just say, please stay away from anything political. You know, if it's to do with, um, local state or federal politics just stay away from it because you will offend somebody in some way shape or form um, you know keep it professional on all of those platforms also it's going to give you business longevity and add value to it as well now as you follow those influences in your industry and you take part in those groups there'll be valuable information that others are sharing on there as well so you'll be able to have a look at what sort of post do others post that uh, actually get a really good reaction and that will give you lots of tips and hints as to the type of content that you can use down the track as well. So constantly when we're on social media, we're always looking at things and we're saying, gee, that worked really well for that person. We're going to do that also. Um, what sort of content seems to get the best response when it comes to it, jokes and memes, all of those jokes and memes and things like that, it, it gets the most amount of engagement, obviously, yes. But you can't just have memes and jokes as content on your social media platform all the time. There has to be some sort of business seriousness behind it as well. So um, looking at the different types of content that you're seeing posting around and see what works and use some of it sometimes. There's sort of anything's good in, in um, what do they say? Not, not, not doing it all the time, just doing it sometimes. Step number seven, using hashtags. Now, this is a really big one, particularly if you are on Instagram. So hashtags are words with the symbol hashtag before them. If you haven't seen hashtag before um, or know what it's about, people actually use them to um, be able to follow and search, particularly on Instagram, but it's now becoming bigger in Facebook as well. Hashtags are used as a way of grouping posts by subject. So if you add a hashtag to a post, it will be grouped with all the other posts that have used that same hashtag. So if you see a post with a hashtag, you can click on that hashtag uh, and you can see all of the other posts that have used that same hashtags. So uh, we do, as I said, Instagram is really big on hash, um, hashtags. Uh, I've got an example here just, you know, to say, if you were, say, in the fitness industry, um, maybe it's CrossFit and you use the hashtag, hashtag CrossFit for life. When you clicked on that hashtag, you would see all the other posts that people have created around that same um, CrossFit for life um, as well. So the power of hashtags is that they allow you to get your content in front of a broader audience. So there may be people who aren't necessarily following you, but they are actually following the hashtag. So uh, they don't, um, the, it, it gets them to your page. So essentially they might be following the, the hashtag um, cakes or specialty cakes or birthday cakes or wedding cakes, uh, you know, particularly if they, they're um, getting married, they'll be following a hashtag like wedding cakes if they're thinking about what sort of wedding cake do I want? Um, and it, it is an opportunity for someone to get to your page that wouldn't, wouldn't have been there previously. So they may search the hashtag rather than searching for your business name. So it can be seen by millions of people and hashtags do go global. So people from around the world do see your hashtags as well. So how do you use hashtags? Well, typically it works like this. You create a social media post and at the end of the post, you would add some hashtags that are somehow related to that post. Now, if you're struggling when it comes to hashtags, I do have a bit of a strategy and this is a bit of a bonus uh, info because I don't normally share this, but we do have a hashtag strategy for our clients also. So the first thing we do when we meet with a client is we come up with 15 what we call branded hashtags. So on Instagram, you can use up to 30 hashtags. So we will use uh, up to 15 branded hashtags and those hashtags would be, for example, for my own business would be, um, we create a hashtag for the business. So hashtag altitude business solutions, that would be one hashtag. 
But then I would also use hashtags around social media management, website designing. I would also use location hashtags. So I would be putting in sort of Beanley, Ipswich, Brisbane, Gold Coast as hashtags. It's very easy to get to 15 once you start. So those 15 branded hashtags go on every single post, no matter what we're posting. So we're allowed to have 30, so that leaves 15 left over. Now, what we're going to do is we're now going to post, uh, we're now going to create uh, five hashtags around that particular pillar. So we're talking about our pillars that we had earlier. So if it was the educational pillar, it would be, you know, around learning, whatever it is, you know, cake, learning cake making or learn to bake or something along those lines, depending on what the pillar was. And we come up with another five. And then we also have another five that are related to the actual post that we're posting. So if there's a picture of a coffee, like there is in, in this particular picture, we would put hashtag coffee. So then from there, all of a sudden you have your 30 hashtags. Now, yes, you should use as many hashtags as you possibly can. You should test and try them. And if you need a really good website, I'm just going to look it up and type it into the chat for you because there's one hashtag that I use all the time. Um, sorry, one website that I use all the time and it's called all hashtag. It is free completely free so I'll just pop that into the chat for you now um, and it is a hashtag generator so you can literally type in cakes and it will generate 30 hashtags for you and help you with that process but having a hashtag strategy just helps your um, all of your posts get seen by more people particularly on Instagram so this is an example of what I was talking about with hashtags. My example was about CrossFit a little bit earlier. Obviously we're centering it around cakes at the moment, uh, but um, you know, you would use for, for a CrossFit business, you might use CrossFit, CrossFit for life, CrossFit workout, but there would be a number of hashtags. If you just typed in CrossFit, a number of them would come up in that, um, in that generator. Now, one thing I will say is just be a little bit careful about the use of hashtags also. If your hashtags aren't really related to the content that you're sharing, there's a chance that you could really turn people away. So if you are not using hashtags, you know, if you're saying hashtag Gold Coast and you're not located at the Gold Coast, um, you don't service the Gold Coast and the picture wasn't taken at the Gold Coast, people are just going to just, yeah, they're going to get turned off by it. So just make sure your hashtags are relevant. If you can't come up with 30, that's okay. Just come up with as many as you can. It will help you out. Um, oh, here we go. I did put a couple of examples in here. I'd forgotten that I'd done that. So to get help with hashtags, there is an app, um, Lee Tags, which I have on my phone. I just find the app a little bit easier to use. Um, and there's a free version of that for you to use also. Then all, all hashtag as we spoke about .com. Um, Tailwind is a program um, that's a paid um, service that you can use for both your Instagram and for your Pinterest. Um, if you're wanting to uh, create hashtags, that's another one that can get a strategy for you, but it is a paid service. And number eight, I know we're coming to the end of time. I've got five minutes left, so I'm so glad I'm at the last tip. But number eight is to experiment. If you truly want to succeed on social media, you'll need to experiment to see what works best for your audience. You know, different types of content will resonate with different audiences. Do what, continue to do what is working. Don't do what isn't working. What will happen is sometimes things that you think this is going to be amazing and awesome, you post it and nothing happens and you hear crickets. We do it all the time. You know, we have a number of clients and we create things sometimes and go, oh my God, that's going to be awesome. And then we post and go, I can't believe they didn't like that. You know, now we have to start again. So you, it is a process, but once you get to that six to 12 months, you've really got a good idea of what your clientele is responding to uh, and, and you're getting that engagement. And so, you know, well, I won't be posting stuff like that again. I'll be posting more of this. So it just makes it really easy. Experimentation is the key. 
Um, it's especially critical because social media platforms are, are constantly changing. If you have an expert in your field that you can talk to on a regular basis or you can chat to about any changes that come up in the algorithm um, and what you need to do for that, um, then that's really great if you can get somebody in the ear or get onto YouTube, find a couple of really good um, people on YouTube that you can watch because they're always going, okay, let's do a video about the latest Facebook algorithm change and how you can beat it. So that's the kind of information that you want to get as well. So um, obviously, as I said, Facebook loves videos at the moment, as an example, that may change down the track. Instagram at the moment is really pushing anybody who uses Reels so if you're a business that's on Instagram and you're using Reels, you're going to get pushed out really, really well. But that may change down the track as soon as they change their mind also. Be constantly testing. See what works more effectively than other things and keep doing the things that, that works. Um, so, you know, using your social media regularly and making sure you're testing that, you're, you're attracting new clients, you're building your brand, you're establishing yourself as a thought leader, you're connecting with your audience, you're trying to create meaningful relationships with them. And this is what social media was all about. This is what it was always intended for. Um, it was supposed to be a social media platform. Now, when you sit down and you look at this plan, it's not particularly com complicated to get started. You just need to start. And once you start and you start saying, well, I'm not going to post this and I am going to post this. Now, what I do find with most small businesses is they either have time or money. So they either have the time to spend to coming to webinars like this, creating their own content or, you know, doing all of that stuff. And they don't have the money to pay somebody to do it. So they will sit there and they will prefer to learn and do it themselves and spend the 10 to 15 hours a week that it can actually take to keep your social media profiles alive. Other people de decide to get a social media manager in, but that's normally when they've got some money down the track. So you might be here today because you um, are wanting to learn about it. Um, and then you might want to engage someone down the track as well. The key to it all is don't wait any longer. You know, there are clients out there who are on social media who are just waiting for you to find them, but they're not seeing you because you're not posting often enough. Now, if there's any questions, I would hope that uh, Jackie would have posted them into the, uh, the chat for me now, because I know you know how to use that feature. Um, but if you do have anything uh, that you'd like to, to ask, now is the time to get that question in before I wrap up. Um, but yeah, basically, when it comes to social media, there is a bit of a strategy to having your pillars, having a hashtag strategy and having a plan. But if you sit down and you make that plan for the next month, it's going to take so much pressure off you and make things so much easier. While I'm waiting for any potential question to come through, I will tell you that our next free webinar, which is on Thursday, the 22nd of April, is on packaging and pricing your services. So this is a really good one if you're a service-based business. I mean, certainly you can do it for products also, but if you're a service-based business, this is a really great um, webinar for you. Um, there's options for you with the ASBAS program as well. You can have one-on-one -on -one sessions. They actually start from $44, not $66 um, now. So they're from $44. The two-hour workshops are $25 and they're normally online, though we are having some in-person ones coming up very shortly. And then we have these fantastic free webinars where you get to have all this great information shown in the form of a slideshow to you as well. For more information on that, you can head, head to the uh, ASBAS website, which is asbas.com.au and uh, find out all of the information, but I'll also be putting the link in the email with this recording. So thank you so much for joining me this evening. I know this time slot doesn't always work for everybody, but we like to give a lot of different times. So Jackie, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Hopefully I'll see you at a networking event uh, in the near future. I know I haven't been out and about myself for a little while, so it's time for me to get back out there as well. So thanks again for joining me and I really hope that information was helpful to you and I hope to see you in the future. Thanks again.